Hey everybody, we're going to show you today how to make a Spanish coffee. And I am here today with Pete Sutton. I'm gonna turn it over to Pete. Uh, Pete is the head of our marketing department and he has mastered, I'm putting you on the spot there, he has mastered the Spanish coffee uh, ingredients. And we are gonna learn with Pete today how to make a Spanish coffee. Pete, what do you think? All right, so this is gonna be the Marathon Coach version. It's just pretty much a Spanish coffee with a few of our embellishments. I like it. So first thing we're gonna do is, there's two ways to do a tr uh, Spanish coffee. One, Mal is quite versed in, and that is when you're caramelizing sugar on the glass, you can use a very high alcohol content. What was that, a 161 or something like that? I believe so. Yeah, the, the problem is, is 161 tastes like you know, it's like gasoline. So we found a different brand by doing it, doing it less alcohol content, but you can't flambe it. So we use a torch. First so of all, can you talk to us about the glassware? What's the proper uh, glassware that we should be using? Good point. So these are high tempered. So they've been heated, heated at a higher temperature and cooled slowly. Also, um, they're not really thin, but you also don't want to do one that's thick and chunky. Understood. Because okay. The heat expansion, when you're flaming it, will explode it. So this is tempered, and it's kind of a normal thickness for a water glass or a wine glass, and uh, that's what you want. Okay. Uh, definitely, if you're gonna do something like this, buy one or two and go try it before you actually go make a bunch for your friends, just in case you got the wrong glass. Gotcha. So, one of the first things we're gonna do, we're gonna use a torch instead of flambeing, uh, and in this case, with this fuel, which I gotta fight the right nozzle for the right tip. I'm gonna step away while you're doing this. Sure. <laughs> yeah. There is actually a, there we go. There is a trick to this. And that is you hold everything upside down. If you hold it this way and you try and inject it in, you're just pushing propellant, but no fuel. Oh, okay. And for, I did this three times and I was like, what am I doing wrong? And then all of a sudden it dawned on me, oh yeah, dummy. So there's a little tiny, nozzle down here, just line it up, and that's it. Now that guy's charged. Put that guy away. And then there's a few tricks to be able to get this guy to actually Because it has a fire. safety on it, right? It does. And I can't remember where it is, so it's going to take me a couple tries. They got too many of them. Or is it that one? There we go. Stay on. There's the lock. Okay. Okay. So that guy's going. I'll actually turn that off just for the moment. Good idea. I know it's all working. <laughs> um, next thing we're going to do is we're going to cut some wedges. Okay. What are the wedges for? So this is for garnish? We're going to be, going to be prepping this, but there's two reasons. One is for garnish. Okay. One is you want to get the outside of this wet about half an inch to three quarters down so sugar will stick to it. Understood. And I discovered that, yeah, you can use water but it's a lot more fun if you use an orange because it's a little stickier and you get that aroma when you get your nose close to the glass. Mm, I like it. And you can smell the orange. Okay. So we'll just prep with a couple of these guys. And in reality, all we really need for today, since we're just doing two, we're gonna do two wedges and that's it. I'll do this last one just for the purpose of um, rubbing on the glass. All right, so we'll set this stuff aside. These two are the good ones. So, you know what we didn't get? Something to wipe my hands on. We need a napkin at some point. All right. Uh, I think Abigail's gonna go grab one for us and in the meantime. So all I'm gonna do is just rub this on the outside of the glass, like so. Hello. And this is, you can use granulated sugar. I used more of a pastry sugar, which is a little bit more finer. And I like the finer stuff because it melts faster. Oh, gotcha, okay. Okay, so what you did was you prepped it with the orange peel and then you got it dipped into the sugar. Yep, okay. so we'll set this one aside. We'll do one more. Okay. Oh, those are my good ones. Oh, yeah. You don't have to be real nice and tidy. At least I don't think so. It's Sure. You may have a different, you've, since you've bartended, you may have a different feeling about I it. I have just a little, but boy, I tell you, you you're looking good so far. All right, okay. so, yeah, you can box that guy up, All and right. now we get to melt. Oh, cool. I've been waiting for this part. 
See if I can get, get the lock to stay on. There we go. So it'll turn first clear, oh, and then it'll start to caramelize, which gets it a slightly golden thing. You don't have to go all the way to really golden. You can see that little gold flavor yeah, there. Yeah, and John's getting a good close-up of that right there. Yeah, Abigail, you can get some still shots anytime you want. But you see it's just kind of a slight golden caramelized tint mm -hmm. to it. Yeah. It's kind of nice. That's real nice. That one's ready to go. Oh, a little bit on the inside. I'll get him with too. There we go. So that one's done. It smells good too. Yeah, it does. And this is, if you're doing Spanish coffee for friends and family, this is what makes it so fun is do this at the beginning while they're watching. Because you're going to have people say, ah, I'm not much into the sweet stuff. Mm -hmm. No, thanks. I'll, I'll pass. And then they'll see you prepping. And they're going to be going, you know what? Maybe I will go ahead and have one. Yep. So, okay, so that's done. Next, we're going to prep one of the garnishes. Gotcha, okay. So, marshmallows. Short stick, don't get the extra long ones, you don't need it, but press it to the middle. And you can see there's some debris on there. And I'm actually gonna rub the stick with a little bit of orange, and I'll show you why in a minute. Okay. Okay, so we are gonna toast these. So this is a little bit of a marathon touch here doing this. Oh. Uh, this isn't normally on a Spanish coffee. Um, there's something about the smell of toasted marshmallows, mm. and it's just, I love it. Don't I know. Yeah. This guy is tricky. There you go. So I usually just start with this guy, and every once in a while I'll light one on fire a little bit, and I gotta blow it out. It blisters a lot faster than oh, over. Oh, look at that! Over a um, fire. Well done, well done. Yeah. You guys see that finesse? For those of you out there who are enjoying this video, that is called finesse. <laughs> there we go. So let's go. Whew. Very go good. Very good. <laughs> now I'm going to go in and I'm going to melt these guys. Okay. Now that's why I put the orange on. Yeah. There, so it doesn't burn the stick. Understood. So, so it doesn't. No, I'm going to set this. That's really nice looking. Right on top. That way, for those people who weren't sure they wanted one, they get to sit there and watch these being made and see these toasted marshmallows just sitting there waiting to be eaten. All right. Boy, look at that. Just like you know what you're doing. So that's it for the flame. Gosh, it does smell good, huh? It does. Now, All one right. thing that we didn't have at our disposal today was some Giardelli chocolate, like they put in a mocha. Right. But I usually like to take these things and turn them and, and drizzle a little bit on this. Okay. And I have seen it. some photos that you showed me of that, so yeah. understood. All right. All right, Pete, what do you need next? So now we're just going to go ahead and build the coffee, which makes it kind of fun. All right. Well, we've got our French press that Abigail put together for us. All right. We'll start our first one. So we start, I pretty much do it in order as, as I've got it. So triple sec, uh, half an ounce, and definitely measure these things for those of you out there. Don't just take a guess. You'll never get it right. Right. Um, so half ounce. Uh, yep. Triple sec. That one's done. Next up is going to be the VIX two ounces. And for those of you out here who uh, have never tried VIX, it's a coffee liqueur and it's pretty darn good. It's better some of the other brands I've tried. We ended up quite a few things just seeing what was our favorite. And this one... Pretty Trader darn Vicks has been around for decades. It's good stuff. So that was one ounce, huh? And it calls for two. Boy, this is going to be sweet. So two ounces of the Trader Vicks Kona coffee. Yep, and now three quarters of the plantation rum. And this gets into, again... Yeah, tell us about this plantation rum, Pete. So we tried four different brands, including higher alcohol content. Uh, the plantations, what we settled on, we thought it was really nice tasting. When you get more alcohol content, 
you really got to get up there high to like the 161 before it'll flame really oh, well. Oh, okay. Um, but the problem is, is it doesn't taste really sweet because they, you know, they've converted all those sugars over. I need three quarter. Three quarter. Ounce. Yep. So this is this is what I like. Uh, we'll see if you guys think the same. There's the rum. Gotcha. Now we're gonna go for coffee. Um, my wife and I have tried two different things. We've tried uh, Stumptown's Hairbender, and we've tried uh, a dark roast from or dark espresso roast from Starbucks. Both are great. Okay. Um, this is a little mellower, a little more acidic because it's more like a blonde coffee. The other one is stronger coffee flavor. So I think in this case... And before we filmed, we, we did, um, we, we grinded these beans. See how weak that is? Yeah, yeah. It didn't affect the flavor here though. Mm -hmm. Okay, I, I like the Stumptown Hairbender better, but my wife likes the darker roast. So I did three ounces of the coffee. Takes care of that. Okay. And then we're gonna do a splash of orange bitters, which is right here. Now, this is a little bit of an addition of ours. Uh, definitely there is orange flavoring to this with the triple sec, um, but you're gonna, it just adds a nice aroma. So from there, we pour in half an ounce of heavy cream and don't just Dump it in real fast. I know that sounds funny. Yeah. Oh, uh, you got it. Uh, you got to open that thing up. Thank you, buddy. So, uh, Pete, talk to us about how to pour the whipping cream properly, <laughs> because I know you want to take it slow. Yeah. There's just. It's so funny. There was a certain speed to it. If I dumped it in real fast, it it, it acted different. So, I pretty much just pour it in like this. Get gotcha. kind of that cloudy thing. Yep. And I don't, it's funny how pouring things in can make a difference. But anyway, so there we go. From here, we're gonna add in, we're, we're ready to top it. So I'll go ahead and get some pictures, Abigail, because this is, this is the basic drink. Now we, at home, we were trying different mixes, trying to get the mix down and get the right flavor. Okay. And my son noticed something, my son, by the way, just so you know, he's close to 30, so yes, it's okay to hit, give a 30 year old some rum. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the uh, he discovered that without all the embellishments on it, it didn't taste the same or feel the same. There's something about the whole experience of the yeah. aroma and everything else that changes it. So this will taste one way, but once I get it all embellished, it's going to change it. Right. In a good way. So first thing is regular old whipping cream. Okay. It also makes it look. Uh, it's fun. Yes. Now I'm going to need that dark chocolate and that little grater. There you Here's go. the little grater. I'll open it. This is a it. nutmeg grater. And I'm going to use 70% cocoa chocolate and grate just a little bit on Which top. Which is this right here. Yep. Oh, this is the brand that you selected. But 70%. Yep. Okay. So it's just enough to give it a little bit like that. Okay. And then the next part is an orange zest. So in that case, yep. Now there is a trick to this guy, if you've never used one. Uh, this is gonna collect, which Mal, I believe you already knew this mm -hmm. trick. Don't get down into the white. The white is bitter. The and pith, just take the, the top off. Just take the top. The pith is bitter. You don't want it. Now, thing is, is see, it's sticky. So how do you get it off and onto this? Well, there is a trick to it, and you might want to get a picture of this real quick because this is an important part of how to get it off. So take a picture of that, and then I'll snap it. So then you just go like this, and that's how you get it off. I think I could have held it a little higher and got a little better spread. No, you're okay. Basic concepts there. Yep. So from here, it's pretty simple. Um, you go ahead and put on your garnish, like so, and... One of these guys. And that's it. Look at that. Very nice. Good presentation. But you're going to get, when you, when you go to take a sip of that, you're going to get the smell of the marshmallow. You'll get just enough orange without the orange being overwhelming. And just a hint of chocolate and, of course, the wonderful mm -hmm. coffee. 
All right, let's try it. Go for it. Okay. So do I take the any of the garnish off or I just drink? I guess everybody's the same. I'm going to uh, take the orange off so okay. that I can get into it here. Oh, boy. Okay. So here's what I'll tell you. You're absolutely right about the whipped cream, the orange shavings. It literally adds to the drink um, because I got, I got the orange, I got the whipped cream, I got, I, I guess I got a little bit of the chocolate too. Can you smell the toasted marshmallow? Yeah. Oil? This is actually very, very good. And for those of you who know or don't know, I'm not really into alcoholic drinks, but this is really, really tasty. Yeah, for someone like you and me who don't drink a lot, this is kind of dangerous because it's so <laughs> yummy. Wow. It's kind of like a spiked up coffee chocolate mocha thing, and it can trick you into what you're drinking. You know, it's I'm really going, tasty and fun. I'm going to tell you that, in my opinion, the number one ingredient not to overlook when you're making all this, because I know for a lot of you out there, there's a, there's a lot involved here. But the number one ingredient not to overlook is the orange peel shavings because that really has made a difference, at least in my two, two drinks. That's yeah. fantastic, Pete. All right. Fantastic. Any other tips for people uh, on either preparing to make the drinks or when you're making the drinks? I don't think so. I think it's just have fun. I think one of the things that Pete did say is not to, to make sure you've got a really good, uh, this plantation, yeah. So, so your rum needs to be the proper rum. There's a lot of people out there. You can try anything you want. Obviously, we we tried other brands. We tried other brands, lot you know, popular brands of the, you know, like the coffee liqueur, and this is what we ended up with. So obviously, you can make this with any rum. You can make this with Kahlua or Man, any this triple is good. sec, but it's not going to be the same. So if you've got Kahlua, and you don't want to use the VIX, go for it. We found it to be a lot more harsh. Uh, so, but it's it's all up to you. Have fun and enjoy it. That's exactly right. So this is the Marathon Spanish Coffee with Pete Sutton. And a big thanks to everyone in the marketing team and, and uh, especially to Pete and uh, Pete's family because they actually gave him a lot of feedback while he was experimenting on what we should do to bring to the desert because this is a drink that Jim Cogley and myself will be bringing to the desert and making down there uh, on our lots. So Pete, big thanks to you and everybody else involved because it's it's really, really good. Good. <laughs> so I'm, ex I'm excited to get down there and show everybody. Uh, we'll probably be FaceTiming you from, uh, from down there like, Pete, what, how do I do this? <laughs> I guess that's why we have the video. Thanks everybody for watching. Thank you.